Hi, I'm Bill West. Most of the time, I sit here editing film for television. Now, occasionally, I luck out, and the boss sends me out with a camera. Now, the change of pace is good, but not all the assignments are. Just the other day, our news editor came in waving a bunch of newspaper clippings. Stories with headlines like Apollo missions cut back, 5,000 lose jobs at KSC. You remember them. See how bad it is, he said. So I went over to Brevard. That's the film I'm looking through now. Some of it's stock footage, some of it's mine. But you know, I don't think I came back with the story that I was sent out for. Here, take a look. I think you'll see what I mean. I hadn't been over to the Cape area for quite a while. I guess I expected it to look like a ghost town with cutbacks and all. Morning traffic surprised me first. I was en route to Kennedy Space Center, but turned off at the Visitor's Information Center. Plenty of action there. They told me more than a million persons had toured the spaceport in 1970. An additional quarter million were estimated to have come to see the free displays, demonstrations, and movies about the space program. Over 90% were from out of state. Now, if only a fraction of these numbers stayed in the area overnight or longer, it should have provided a noticeable business boost. NASA plans to enlarge the information center, too. Well, that's the end of that roll. That's take one. Now, let's see what we have on take two. Of course, there's no use stopping at the vehicle assembly building. It's so big that you could take away several thousand workers or add several thousand extra, and the camera couldn't show it. Now, inside the VAB, NASA and its contractors are working on rocket stages for future Apollo manned flights to the moon. Modifications also will begin soon to adapt some of the facilities to handle the hardware for the Skylab program, a manned space station to be launched in 1972. Everybody was working hard to prepare for the Apollo 14 mission. All stages of the Saturn V, as well as the Apollo command and service modules, were each getting their share of attention. If there were fewer technicians here, perhaps the rest were working twice as hard. In the flight crew training building, the astronauts were rehearsing their moonwalk operations. Now, these are more extensive than on previous missions, some moon landings had to be cut back, and NASA was determined to obtain maximum results from those remaining. Even with the so-called recession, Kennedy Space Center remains the second largest single employer in the state. Its annual payroll is $243 million, and that ain't hay in anybody's economy. KSC's neighbor across the Banana River to the east is the Air Force Eastern Test Range. It can hardly be termed inactive either, with a payroll of $195 million last year. Together, more than 27,000 employees, over one-tenth of the population of the county, picked up paychecks totaling $438 million in 1970. This kind of depression was going on just outside Cape Kennedy's south gate, too. Port Canaveral, the man-made protected anchorage, which services the test range and central Florida, was being dredged to double its capacity. It's the home port now for a new scallop fishing industry. A sizable excursion boat has started daily sightseeing tours there will be more room for commercial shipping and the shrimp fleet. Two extra lanes for the Bennett Causeway were near completion. Another tollway 
the Pineda Causeway, connecting the South Beaches with the Brevard mainland, was well advanced. Oh yes, I saw some homes for sale. The real estate brokers had no complaints. They say new people, and especially retirees, moving to the area helped to offset those who moved away. And in some areas, new housing units are going up. Now, I can hardly imagine those are being built on speculation. With the Apollo cutbacks, one must expect that certain office buildings would be vacated. Yet enrollment in Brevard schools is down very little, leveling off at about 61,500. Some of the modern schools still must make use of portable classrooms, and one or two even have additions being constructed to make the highly rated system even more efficient. College-level educational activities center around Brevard Community College and the Florida Institute of Technology. Community college enrollment this fall was 6,867, up more than 600 students from the fall of 1969. BCC will start construction of a South County branch this year. Melbourne's Florida Institute of Technology enrolled 1,971 students this fall as compared to 1,979 in the fall of 1969, down eight students. Yet a new dormitory is under construction, and in 1970, a towering science building, complete with atomic reactor, was readied for its first classes. FIT's Hydrospace Technical Institute occupied new quarters in Cocoa Beach and will have additional facilities at Port Canaveral. It's clear that this privately endowed school is optimistic about the future. During the past 10 years, Brevard has more than doubled its population. In 1970, the count went over 230,000, and 30 new industries were established in the county. That's twice as many as in 1969. The county's shopping center seemed to be drawing lots of traffic around the Christmas season when I was there. There are a number of attractive shopping complexes. One of the largest was just completed during the year. Sales tax figures show that over $50 million was spent in all stores in the county in October of 1970, indicating retail sales of between $500 and $700 million for the year. In short, my camera and I found more reason for optimism than pessimism over in Brevard. More evidence of stabilization than recession. And certainly no run on crying towels. Now, only one thing bugs me. How do I cut this story to 60 seconds for tonight's news? <laughs>